So we're here finally starting this um, church job. What we're going to do is all of this center area, we're going to leave the burgundy and just seam up next to the, seam it to the burgundy on the border. They want to keep that. So we are doing this center spot here. We actually did the stage and stuff uh, last year sometime, and I guess they're ready to do the rest of this. So we're going to do this room. It's the sanctuary part, the worship center. And this room looks like a Sunday school room or something. But we're going to be doing this as well. Okay, so the way with what he's doing right there, if you're watching, he's actually grabbing the base and he's pulling down on it. So if you pull up on that base, the, uh, it's actually glued directly to the sheetrock. So if you pull up on it, you're going to pull the paper off the sheetrock and you'll have to repaint and everything like that. So what he's doing there, just get it started just a little bit with his knife so he can grab a hold of it and then just pulls down. That way, if something does get ripped, it's gonna be down below. Did you see that right there? See how this just come off? That's all glue. And that will actually, see this is sheetrock paper. If you pulled up, that would pull up above the paint. You'd have to repaint. So always wanna pull down whenever you're pulling the cover base off. So we're fixing to start cutting up the carpet. Uh, this is what I got right here. You see the whole thing here? What it is, it'll twist out and extend out to make it longer, but I like to use it short. That way I can actually get right here, put all this weight behind it. it makes it go a little easier. I ain't gonna strain so hard on my arms and stuff. What it is, it's a little spiky here. And this is just an average utility blade. You can swap it out, unloosen this and put new blades in it all the time. This point will actually get right down on the floor and slide on the floor and it pushes the carpet up to this blade. Sort of slice it right up, just watch this. Now keep in mind, this is commercial carpet, so it's glued down right now. Just that easy. Watch this again, let me try it out right here. Now this is glued down, it has not been pulled up yet, so we're gonna check it out right here. This has been some patch work, so there you go. Just that easy, and you can pull up. Because it's glued down, you don't want to try to pull up the right big piece. So uh, cut it in strips like this. Definitely makes it easier to uh, pull up a big, pull up glue down carpet. what we've been doing to get our uh, new carpet matched up with the old carpet real good because uh, the old carpet is not necessarily straight I mean for, for the most part it's a straight line around the edges but there is slight divots and stuff like that in it where it varies in and out so in order to keep my carpet with those what I'm going to do is uh, what I've been doing, I cut me some slits like that, all the way down to the edge of my burgundy carpet. I'm going right to the edge there, and then I'm just going to mark it. I'm going to take my knife, come straight down right there, 
and I'm going to mark right at the edge of the burgundy where it needs to be. I'm going to do that on each piece. Okay. And then after I get that done, I'm going to just fold it back and cut each piece individual. That way, uh, if it does... If it does from end to end, if it does vary a little bit, um, say be tight there and tight there and have a gap in the center, well, just cutting little short spots at a time like that is going to allow my carpet to flow with whatever variation is in the maroon carpet. So this is going to keep everything nice and close. Okay, so see right here, I'm on my mark right here, and I'm on my mark right here, and look how much it runs off to the next cut. See this? How much it's off? So if I was to cut this entire piece, if I was to cut this entire piece, there would be a gap in the center, the thickness of it's off right here. So that's why I'm cutting it one piece at a time. Take a look at that and see how it looks. Looks pretty good. Probably up in that other room. Okay. So if you'll notice, I'm turning and tucking it in there. That way I don't pinch any nap. And I am mashing the glue in between the two carpets. So because this is a Shaw non-ravel carpet, we don't have to worry about the seam spraying or pulling loose or anything like that. So we are able to overlap it and double cut it. We don't have to run rows in it. This stuff is virtually impossible to run a row in anyway, just because of it's such a tight net carpet and it's a real tight backing to make it non-ravel. So what I've done, I've took here and I've overlapped the carpet about two inches. And I'll do just a little piece here to show you that how it looks after double cutting it. So the main thing is have a brand new blade, keep your blade straight up and down. If it gets at an angle, either way like that, you're going to have a gap in your seam. So you definitely want to keep your blade straight up and down and you want to try to cut through both layers at one time. Now you don't want to have to come back. So I'm actually going to, if you'll hold that right there, I'm going to put both hands on my knife so I can make sure I get plenty of pressure. Okay, I'll pull this out right here and just show you what it looks like. The Shaw non ravel double cut. So 
So this seam is just gonna virtually disappear. We'll seal it, we'll glue it and seal it. And every, this stuff is wonderful. It's all speckled looking like that and you don't have to worry about these strings pulling or anything like that. This is, this is the perfect glue down carpet. It's a little more expensive. It's definitely a lot better to work with. Okay, so already I can't even see that seam myself that I just now put together there. You can see I got plenty of sailor down there. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm kind of scooping it right in there. That way it matches the sailor between the two carpets. And it's just disappearing somewhere right in here. I don't even know where now, but anyway, it's just disappearing right right before my own eyes this stuff works really well just a tiny little crack right there just take them both right together and roll it Seen uh, the side seams going good with double cutting them. Now, this is the only head seam I've had on the job, so I wanted you to see that you can also cut head seams by double cutting, and it do not affect anything with this particular carpet. It is the Shaw non ravel carpet. Just take this out of here and give me a little look of what it's going to look like. Okay. If you'll come down. 
in here close and take a look at this. See that? Just like if it was a side seam. Goes together real good. So this is the actual head seam going together. Half of it anyway, I got half of it down, and then we'll fold it back and do the other half. Notice as I'm scooping it in there like that, that way it matches the glue in between there good. And we don't get any of the fibers down in the seam. So we just wrapped up on this church job. I just want to do a quick walkthrough, show everything we did, the borders and stuff like that. Everything turned out pretty nice, I think. Do you want that little thing back in there? Yeah, I would think so. You do? I'm sorry. It's all right. Go right ahead. I don't know. We've had a bridge. This is what we've done last year. 